Well, this is really going to sound corny, but I want to make sure that that resource, and I've always thought this, that that resource needs to be there for somebody else. Right. And even before I was an officer, you know, man, I always wanted to be square on my license, square on my size, square on my career limit. Yeah. You know, made sure of my shot, what I was killing. So, you know, I wanted to, you know, make sure it's square. So now I've just transferred that into making sure other folks are doing that. <laughs> <laughs> The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. Thanks for watching, for listening, for tuning in on the radio. Yes. Uh, just thanks for being here. We have a great show for you today. We're excited to have Mr. Mark Vance with us today. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Don King. Is helping me co-host. You bet. Um, I'm takes excited. Two, takes two of you for me, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we okay. needed. I feel real good about tag that. team it today. <laughs> if you don't know Mark, you're about to know who he is. He's a, a great guy. One of our law enforcement officers now. The new manager on uh, uh, Percy Priest WMA. That's right. And uh, if you've watched our social media, you've seen Vance's ventures. So we'll talk well, a little I, bit I about hope, that today. I hope they've never seen me. So that's the whole point. I don't want to be part of the video. Just watch the video. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're always behind the camera, mm. which is okay. It's okay, but uh, we couldn't have those adventures without you. It's, it's cool to, to see what you see as an officer and as a manager out there uh, in the field. So that's what I love about that little, yeah, really. little segment. But we're excited to have you today. It is deer season. It is. Uh, Archer deer season is here. Uh, I'm excited to get out there when I can. I hadn't had a chance yet, but we will before too long. Yeah. Um, hopefully be able to hit some WMAs and highlight some of those places to hunt out there. So it's always fun. Yeah. Um, have you been out yet, Mark? I have not. Uh, I've hunted. I've hunted a little bit, but not the deer kind. I've, I've been out hunting deer hunters a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's part of the job. That's, that's part of it. Yeah, you know, it's uh, opening weekend. I got out there a little bit and worked with the officers in the county just a little bit here and there. But, uh, you know, maybe I'll. Uh, I'll, I'll take care of the tear the, my hunting part here sometime later in the week. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let's start there on on hunting. Uh, did you grow up outdoors hunting and fishing and all that fun stuff? Oh gosh, uh, from my earliest memory, I can remember uh, seven or eight year old pellet rifle. You know, the Red Rider. You'll shoot your eye out with that thing. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, yeah. I had that thing. And of course, the Cardinals and the Mockingbirds around the house. They were <laughs> they were in no danger of me with that thing. But you know, that's you know, I was a great white hunter at seven and eight years old. But uh, even a little later with a pellet rifle, you know, I took took my share of squirrels at 10, 11 years old. So yeah. I've, I've been out there stomping around the woods since I could remember I could. Yeah, and then and today you're, you're, you've are been through the ranks uh, as an officer and now as a manager at one of the WMAs here, First Priest. And uh, did you ever think you'd be working with the agency? Is that what you, you set your goals to be well, growing up? If, I, I would have to say absolutely yes. I mean, from a young age. Uh, uh, Bob Lowry was the first game warden I ever remember. He's the one that took my, uh, not the Bob Lowry that works with us now, it was his dad, okay. Bob Lowry Sr. Yeah. Um, uh, Bob pa passed away a few years ago from cancer, but uh, had Hunter Ed under him, and, you know, I can remember that image of him in, in that uniform, even at 12 years, 11 years old when I t took the Hunter Safety. It wasn't even required then, but right. I could take right. it. And, and you went ahead and took it. And uh, from then all the way up till. I finally did it at 40 years old, so there's a span right there. You yeah. know, that's another story. But uh, at 40, I went on and uh, got was able to get lucky enough to get hired on with the agency. So here I am at 54 here in about three weeks. So wow, I've that's going on. That's crazy to think about. Uh, that's that 14 years. Uh, well, it'd be uh, uh, actually it was 12 this past August. Okay. So, you know, it's just uh, wow. That's it, man. Yeah. Well, I, I went back to school at 40. It took me a couple of years to get through, get another degree. <laughs> there you I go. say another degree, so I'd already went through school with something else. So here we are. Well, uh, and that's a little known fact, too, you know, when, when people uh, start thinking about, you know, that's something I might want to do for a living. Uh, it's good to know that you have to have a background in in biology, forestry. That's uh, right. You that's know, right. So, you know, you <laughs> And every now and then you run into, run into folks that uh, two days ago got stopped in a store, young man, uh -huh. his dad, hey, he wants to be a game warden. And the first question I always ask, do you, can you just not live without going hunting and fishing? Well, sure, man, that's what I'll ever want to do. 
then this job's not for you. <laughs> you're always hunting. You're not you're not hunting on opening day. You're working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When the fish are biting, what are you doing? You're out there checking fishermen, make yeah. sure they're they're all square. You know, you're going to get to hunt during the week, but you know, it's it's not like that crisp first light of the opening morning right or the the, when you know those fish are going to be there you know it's just it's a little different but the mindset you know i was i want to be in a situation well this is really going to sound corny but i want to make sure that that resource and i've always thought this that that resource needs to be there for somebody else right and even before i was an officer you know man i always wanted to be square on my license square on my size square on my crea limit yeah you know, made sure my shot what I was killing. So, you know, I wanted to, you know, make sure it's square. So now I've just transferred that into making sure other folks are doing it. <laughs> Sometimes whether they want to or not, but that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool to hear. That's, um, you know, not only are officers uh, busy, I mean, the biologists, even oh, yeah. the biologists don't have time to go hunting and fishing sometimes. Right, right. Even myself, you know, being in communications, I don't always find the time to get out there. Yeah. It's it's tough, but if you enjoy what you're doing, helping others get out there and enjoy the outdoors, that's it. It kind of fills the void a little. Oh bit. yeah, yep. You know, that's uh, you know, this time of year, I start thinking about sauger and walleye. You know, mm-hmm. Cordell Hall. I mean, mm-hmm. from now to Christmas, you know, I can go up there on a 20 degree night and I can catch fish. You know, I don't forget to fish during the summer, but when it slows down in the winter time, uh-huh. that's where I'm at. So yeah. I get, you know, I do enjoy that type of fishing. So. Uh, you know, and it's a little easier to do it this time of year because not a whole lot going on. You got a lot more darkness hours than you do daylight. And right. That's when I want to catch those fish. So. Yeah. Well, since you're on fishing, what's uh, what's some of the favorite fishing spots around the area? You might give a few tips for some folks. Oh gosh, Pools Knob. People fish there. Just uh, checked a couple of fellas, fellas down there yesterday. Um, Jefferson Creek. Tons of fishing goes over on Jeff- Jefferson Creek access. Mm-hmm. Um, crappie the fall crappie run is probably already on i've not talked with uh i'll call them the fish heads what they are you yeah know, but uh, <laughs> i'm sure they're uh uh seeing a few of the the young of the year checks so they're uh, already doing that um hybrid have run all summer i think i think they were catching them just after fro- the last frost and they've caught those all summer it's been a great year for for hybrid so um uh, Night fishing still going on. I know they're catching smallmouth over here on the lake, even though it's up about three feet from what it normally pulls this time of year. Because yeah. I had to mow in lake water today <laughs> oh, on the WMA. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm literally in some areas, and I mean, I'm, that's lake water in the lakes. I can see it over there <laughs> through the trees. So you know, that's just part of it. Yeah. Well, um, that just goes to show you uh, you're doing it all. You're doing you're doing a lot. I mean, because. Yeah. I'm not doing enough. Don't say I'm not doing enough. That's, at least that's what it feels like sometimes. I mean, if you're not on a tractor, you're not checking a fisherman or a hunter, you know, or, or deciding what needs to be planted here or there. I mean, you got your crew, right? You got a crew there that helps you out. And are you? Yeah, me, yourself? myself, and I. Okay, all right. <laughs> you know, and it, and it's you know, you talking about checking folks. It's kind of odd when I'm driving around on a track of bush hogging and I see somebody that might be fishing or getting ready to go hunting. I pull up, RP, you know, cut the RT, uh, uh, PTO off on a tractor and I step out with a gun about, can I see your license? And we're like, they're not used to a game board stepping <laughs> off a tractor. You know? It's a big green tractor, not a big green truck. But, yeah. you know, uh, just, uh, you know, the way it is out there on, uh, on the WMA, it's used all the time. A lot of people out there, uh, I checked fishermen today, I checked dog trailers today. Uh, one fellow was, wanted to go squirrel hunting, he actually stopped and asked, so he was good to go today. Uh, and, you know, as a matter of fact, that's on Unit 1. That's, man, this may be opening up a can of worms talking about Unit 1. Well, unit Priest two, has one, two different <laughs> units, right? Two different units. And they're both in the guide, too. They're both in the guide. TNWildlife.org. <laughs> TNWildlife.org. And uh, most sporting goods places, if they get any sporting goods at all, should have some of these guides. But uh, Unit 1 is separated out because if it's a dog trial area. Mm. It's closed Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, September 1st through April 30th. Um, Still have to educate folks on that a little bit. Uh, this this weekend, there were some bow hunters that they are on the wrong side of the road. Unit 1's over there, Unit 2's over here. But mm-hmm. uh, there's good maps on our website that you can look and find that. Uh-huh. So, uh, and it's a little different because uh, the, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And on Unit 1, I guess the if you look at it right, the only thing that an adult can hunt on Unit 1 besides deer and turkey is a squirrel. Okay. No waterfowl, 
uh, the rabbit and quail are left for the uh, for the youngsters. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's uh, it's a little different on unit one. Read your guide, know it well. You yeah. know, and, and me, I've been there a little over three months. I still carry it around with me. Got it on the tractor to make yeah. sure if I get a phone call, I'm not telling somebody wrong. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, uh, unit two is a little different. It's a little more uh, open uh, statewide. Uh, uh, well, I guess I do need to back off just a little bit. It's shotgun only during the rifle season. Archery, uh, you can hunt with archery anytime, just like you can the rest of the season, but no center fire rounds for deer. And on uh, on the uh, unit one, it's 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 muzzleloader for the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of the two weeks of the muzzleloader season. And that's kind of squirrely, <laughs> but man, it's uh, you got to think about it because it's only open on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh -huh. So you can hunt with muzzleloader during the muzzleloader season, but when the rifle gets here, it's all bow. Okay. Nothing but bow after those two weeks of muzzleloader season. Okay. So, well, that's, that's why it's important to read up read, on the guide. Read yeah. the guide. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we turkey hunted out there this past year and, and uh, didn't have any luck, but saw where birds had been and saw evidence that the people had harvested some birds. But. Had, a, had a good crop of uh, poles out there this time. I probably counted it. On Unit 1, now I can't see Unit 2, but Unit 1, I probably counted 25 poults in three different groups. So wow. Had a pretty good pretty good hatch out there. Good deal. Yeah, I've so. seen quite a few just around my house, too, there in Wilson County. It's good. A, good. It's good to see uh, see some birds running around. Well, oh, yeah. speaking of squirrels, what's the squirrel population out there on Unit 1? Is it is it looking pretty good? Uh, if you can get out towards the pools knob area. On that end, uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of good mature oaks out there. That's where you're going to find the squirrels. Uh -huh. On the unit one proper, there's a few scattered oaks here and there. It's just going to re be really tough to find them. Uh, most of that area is fairly open. Not a lot of wooded areas. Uh, if you get on the, let me see, the western edge towards the uh, Bonacqua water plant, there's a little more mature woods over there. You're okay. going to find some. So there's, I mean, there's squirrels out there. They can be found. Yeah. So they are there. So I know it's good. There's a good oak crop this year too. So we got a good mass crop coming down this time. Good. Well, Don and I saw that sided in some 22s the other day. Uh -huh. So uh, we might go see if we can find a few of them. <laughs> well, come on. We'll, uh, we'll get out there and uh, we'll see if we can't come up with something. That'd be great. Yeah. 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 That would be fun. It, it's a good time of year to be outside. It's cooling off. The weather's nice. Uh, you know, it's hard to beat fall. You know, I can handle 85 degrees. When it's forty percent humidity, when it's ninety percent humidity, no, just give me that air conditioning. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that humidity just tires me up. Uh, but your tractor cab—that's climate control, right? <laughs> okay, just I kidding, believe you. Just kidding. <laughs> Depending on how fast you're going, I guess. Huh? If you get enough ground speed up at three miles an hour, you're doing good. Oh, uh, you know, speaking of that, uh, a lot of our guys that work on our properties—they're farmers too. I mean, yeah. it's. It's a little bit of everything. It's biology, but it's farming. I mean, you you uh, and farm. You got a farm in where you live. Where yeah, you, yeah. You know, I, well, I, I call it a farm. I've got to take care of sixteen acres where my mom is. But, yeah. You know, I'm a I'm a a, a truck farmer. Uh, Sixteen hundred feet of okra. I mean, oh, that's, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Huh. You know, we sell out of it. Uh, you know, I probably had. Uh, couple of thousand feet of corn that I sold out of this time tomatoes yeah. you know yeah. uh so you know I, I, I'm not a, a big row cropper by a soybean farmer but you know something you got to get in there you got to work on got to pay attention got to see what's going on so, yeah another uh, thing about these managers land managers is you got to be a mechanic too okay. yeah. and, a, and, a, and a way to fix <laughs> stuff with baling wire and whatever That's else it. you Bail got. Baling you know? wire and duct tape are the handiest tools, <laughs> almost as good as a pipe wrench and a two by four. It's amazing some of these guys that get, you know, at commission meetings will recognize a person every now and then, you know, for stuff they've done. And Technician of the year. I know some of these of the innovations they've come up with just on their own is just a. Amazing, you know, and this is you know, and I'm going to say this, and I love Glenn Rogers to death. He's he's the uh, the tech two that retired in front of me. And of course, he'd been gone for about a year and a half, so there was some, I'll say, there were some other fingers in the pie. So coming along and finding some of the stuff that was fixed, <laughs> I'm like, oh my word! Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. But yeah, when uh, when things are left to set for a little while. Things you know, stuff happens. Yeah, so you know, right. and you got to come in and fix it. And I spent some time. I'll spend a half a day getting this part off so I can figure out what it is and find out the source for it. See if I can get it ordered. So yeah. you know, and that's happened. So 
and then there's phone calls. I've got uh, got Glenn on speed dial. Hey, do you remember this tractor? <laughs> where, where do I find this part right here? You know, and I just I tell him which one it is, and I tell him what I'm, uh, a halfway description of what it is. Yeah, you'll find that right over here under this, and lift that up, and there it is. I'm like. How do you remember this? Because <laughs> he's had that tractor part 14 times and put it back together right, with yeah. no loose parts. For right. sure, for sure. That's right. It's amazing how resourceful our guys are, too. I mean, it they, is. They, they try to fix it if they can, you know, That's instead it. of taking it to the dealer or whatnot. You know, it's um, these guys are smart. They know what they're doing, and, and if they can fix it. It'll That's f- another day or two's work that isn't oh, going to get right. done. That's if it. That, you that know, machine's if, if, if it's got to sit there and not work, you know, that is not do what it's asked to do, it's it, it's tough. Yeah. You know, I've got a disc right now, you know, and we're having problems with, I guess, all over the United States and here in Tennessee getting parts from certain places. Sure. I've got a part to a bush hog that's back ordered. They're, they're talking oh, late October. Man. Oh, man. So man. what yeah. I'm going to have to do is Ralph and Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> <laughs> if I need to use that bush hog, it's in it's, it's at headwaters. I have headwaters too, which is in Cannon County. Okay, yeah. My bush hog is down up there, so I'm going to have to take a part off the bush hog at Priest, oh, load it in the gosh. truck, take it up there, and put it on that bush hog. Mm-hmm. Use it when I get done. Take it off, bring it back home. Yeah, <laughs> oh, put it man. back on. Wow. So you know, you got to do what you got to do. And that's another thing. Our managers they they've got multiple properties. Like you said, headwaters yep. is yours. Uh, you know, uh, I've hunted Pea Ridge this past year. That's not near. That's nearby. That's uh, very nearby. Headwaters yeah. and. Uh, and so that's yeah, a pretty good ride from Percy Priest mm-hmm. too, isn't it? How far is that? Uh, right at forty miles. Okay, yeah. it's you know, and you know, I try not to get on a big road because anymore the the I twenty four is crazy, oh, crazy yeah. road. You never but know, I, unpredictable. But uh, Mercerburg Road seventy, and that'll take me almost within four miles of the uh, WMA up there. So it works out yeah. pretty good. Middle pretty Tennessee good is blessed with properties to hunt. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. pretty yep. crazy what oh, you yeah. can, how you can get to different places. You know, and very I would, easy. I would be on headwaters. Man, I had people from all over the southeast. Hunting. You know, and I had one guy that was hopping. He he lived in Oklahoma, and he was make made a circuit. And he showed me his license, oh, yeah? and he had he come through uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky. He'd already bought his Kentucky license, Ohio, and I think he was doing an Illinois hunt for. He went back home. Oh wow! And Headwaters was one of his stops, and he huh. was able to take a bird. So okay, he was turkey. Trying, turkey. Yeah, yeah, it was turkey hunting this past spring. That's so. cool. Uh, then I had another fellow that was out of Ohio that came down. He, he went to Yanali, and he asked me if there was anything else in Middle Tennessee, and I told him about Headwaters, and sure enough, he sent me a picture where he bagged one over there on Headwaters, huh. so that was pretty neat. So Wow, that's uh, good. They get utilized, I'll tell you right now. These WMAs, they do get utilized. Yeah, I mean, some of them are busier than others, but mm-hmm. some of them, you know, it's wide open. There's not many people out there, especially during the middle of the week. That's you know? it. That's it. There's some good times to be out there. I had, uh, I had this question the other day. Uh, I had somebody, uh, he said, does priests get hunted? <laughs> and I kind of thought I said, "Are you are you where you can look at it on your phone or computer?" Yeah, I've got it pulled up right now. Okay, I said, "Okay, back off that satellite view and look at that." And if you look at Percy Priest WMA, except for the lake, everything around it is residential. Mm-hmm. People tough. can walk there and hunt. All yeah. they got to do is walk across the road. So it's uh, it's it gets its pressure. You know, yeah. today I probably on a Monday. Nine o'clock there, I'm there bush hogging. And when I get there, there's six vehicles parked around. Huh. People doing different things. You know, one lady was just walking her dog. Other people were working dogs. It's just, you know, one, it gets used. It's, yeah. it's heavily utilized. Yeah. Hey, speaking of that, does somebody walking their dog or just accessing WMA, what do they have to have? Walking their dog, nothing. Okay. Uh, you know, they can come out there. Uh, we, we do ask them to stay on the roads, not out in the fields where, sure. where their dog might jump a deer and take off after a deer, disturbing the game. But walking on the roads, uh, we don't we don't have an issue with that. Uh, fishing, uh, of course, just got to have a, a fishing license sure. for the state of Tennessee. In most ponds, you know, if you're fishing in a private pond, somebody owns all the land around it. They own that water. You don't have that. But here, where the TWA owns all the land around it, guess mm-hmm. what? Those are waters of the state. So uh-huh. you've got to have a license to fish in that water, just like you do the lake that's 100 yards away. Yeah. Uh, people that come out there and work their dogs, train dogs, they got to have the type of one or type 93 uh, to, in order to do that. Yeah. That's, that, that's part of it. Uh, and then, of course, a small game for any of the squirrel hunting and type of one normal license. Of course, the sportsman's license cover that, and yep. all the lifetime license cover the same uh-huh. one. <clears throat> that's what I like to tell people. You know, but that sportsman's, you're good to go. No, you don't have it. to think about it. You that's can get any WMA you want to, get out there and have fun. That's you know? it. That's it. Don't yeah. have to buy anything extra. 
Yeah. Well, but I don't want to let time get by and not touch on on some of these some of the stuff I had written down. Your knowledge, I think it's fun. Uh, if you've if you've seen Vance's ventures on our Facebook page, you see you see Mark out there. You don't see Mark. You see hear Mark behind the phone, <laughs> and he's recording birds or, or or squirrels or a fox or whatever it may be, and telling us a story about it or telling us the science behind it, why they're doing this or that, and 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 you're rescuing birds and things here every now and again. Just how did that get started and why did you, why do you do that why do you uh take time out of your of your day to shoot video of these animals and then educate people and we're glad you do we don't we are glad well you know i would have to go way back i mean i've, I've never been photogenic but i've always been a a photo bug to take pictures and all such as this and even before I got with the WMA, I, I didn't have a cell phone, but, you know, I had a, a cell camera, and I was, I was working for what really got me started in a big way on digital stuff was a digital camera taking pictures while I was working for the American Chestnut Foundation, which that's another tangent. I'm not going oh, in that direction. Okay. I worked for the American Chestnut Foundation, and I'm still a member. But taking pictures in the woods of stuff I've seen, stuff I run into, interesting stuff, but now this camera, which sometimes I just want to skip it like a rock across the lake and let it go <laughs> but it's handy you see something odd you see something strange the strange stuff is always interesting to try to figure out what it is but then the interesting stuff that I know a little bit about and there's some folks that don't so I want to try to do that and this came about from in Cannon County I did a bird presentation because okay. I like my little birds I yeah. like my little Tweety birds did this presentation and they asked you know do you mind, you know, tell us this stuff, you know, when you see one like that. So I have a birder's thread. And actually now I have two birder's thread because huh. I have the people that have iPhones <laughs> on one thread that are pretty easy to talk to. Yeah. And then I have the folks that don't have iPhones, which from an iPhone, it's it's devastatingly hard to try to get a video out to them. Oh. That's why all my videos are one minute and 30 seconds. Anything over a minute and 30 seconds, I can't send to the non iPhone users. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, that's, that's the reason. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, sometimes I might send you two or three different ones on the same subject. Yeah. That's why, you know, because I'm sorry. I want, not necessarily that I'm trying to spread around any kind of wealth of knowledge, but, you know, some to me, some of the stuff seems real simple, and I've always known it. I've always been real good at trees. It took me a little while to learn a scientific name when I come around. But, just wanting to show people what I'm running to, into out in the woods, yeah. whether it's a snake, whether it's a tree, or, you know, natural phenomenon, clouds, sunbursts, you know, whatever, stuff that I find interesting, take a picture. Mm -hmm. And I think the one that's really bounced all the way around the world was that the pollen video. I was going to say that. I mean, you sent me that. That was one of the first videos you sent me, and I was like, why are we not posting this? <laughs> this is great. And I was like, what could I ask my wife? What could we call this? This is great. His name's Mark Vance. We need to make a series. Uh, we can put this on social media. It'll be gold. And, and, and Amy the came through with the name. <laughs> Amy did. Awesome. Yeah, she said, uh, you know, Vance's uh, Ventures, Adventures. I was like, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> But anyway, we posted that, and the Weather Channel picked it up. Yeah, uh, and it was it was great to see. And I'd never seen it before, but pollen releasing from these cedar trees. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I mean, I, wow. I had seen it a time or two, a tree, maybe here and there, and you know, hit a tree one time and saw it release. But to be there when they're just all simultaneously releasing was just that was just. Like I said on the video, this is crazy. Yeah, and it was. And the excitement in your voice. I mean, you know, it, it was. You were excited to see what you were seeing yeah. and, and share that with yeah. folks. And I think that's awesome. And I went back into my phone when you said, you know, you asked the the great question. Have you got any more of these? <laughs> and I was like, does he really want to see these? <laughs> I do. I do. So now every time the birders get one, Jason Harmon gets one. But so, uh, I mean, anyway, that's uh, just kind of a fluky thing. But, you know, sometimes I know a lot about my subject. Sometimes, hey, y'all, look at this. Look what I found. And that's, yeah. you know, and that's what it is. So, Well, it's fun to watch you take a bird to, say, Walden's Puddle oh, yeah. and, and be able to go pick it back up and release it, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's See, I've, better I've, now, you know. I've got an in-between right now. I've got an otter down there. Okay. I've got about yeah. a, this, year's, this mm -hmm. year's otter. Uh, he was doing good in so we're going to see hopefully they do a release back into the east fork of the stones river sometime early fall so oh, okay that's, that's the hopes anyway call yeah. us that's it yeah well yeah it'd be fun to come out and get some video of you of you releasing then well let's just that. open the cage and get out of the way because those things are ferocious <laughs> yeah, right. and you know you know if you've seen a wolverine they're half cousins they'll eat you <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, but I think it is neat to hear. You know, you rattle off biological the the biological name and scientific, scientific name, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and these terms, and it's great for people to hear those and learn. You know, you're educating well, folks at the same the, time. That's why I always when I, if I say a scientific, if I am not absolutely sure, I think. Yeah, I mean, sure, <laughs> but you know, if I remember correctly, you know, it's it, I'll try to say it. Then sometimes it's you know. Uh, some of them are pretty easy to remember, but you know, kind of hard to forget some of them. But yeah. you know, part of it. But anyway, I, just trying to spread a little more information. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see what you come up with next. What you send me next. It's always an adventure to see what's going to come. You did see next. the twelve-inch thorn I sent you yesterday, right? Yes, I've got that. Oh golly. Tell us about that tree. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool because one of the versions, one of the, the species of tree doesn't have the thorns, right? Right. Well, it's, you know, it's just a mutation. But anyway, the tree we're talking about is a honey locust. Uh-huh. Honey locust tree, um, if you've ever seen it, uh, it has massively long thorns, and we can get into the biological reasons years and eons and eons ago of why this tree has thorns. But anyway, you'll find them sometimes that don't. And those trees have made it into our yards as a horticultural special. The honey locust sometimes has a mutation where it doesn't have thorns and it's planted in yards huh. as a shade tree. And there's n no leaves at all to rake up when it loses its leaves. Huh. Has a unique, uh, uh, unique structure. Uh, I like it really because it makes uh, uh, nice flowers that my bees will make honey out of oh yeah so uh, i like that little shade and i've actually started paying attention out in the woods to find these trees that don't have any thorns and yeah i'll always pick up the pot stick them in my pocket my wife finds them when they go through the washing <laughs> machine but anyway i've actually grown i've got four or five planted in the yard oh, that came neat. off of these trees and, oh, and cool. find them so but anyway just uh, honey locusts with no thorns. Uh, the ones that normally did the, I don't know, I don't know if you could put a picture of this in this video somewhere or another, but I found one the other day, a small tree, only four inches, that had thorns that were over 12 inches long. Wow. So you accidentally fall into that, mm. you're going to get punctured. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so did you find this on WMA? Uh, or where were you? No. Okay. I refused your answer on the grounds I might incriminate myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually doing some... Uh, uh, Let's say some surveillance work for the upcoming bow season there in Canada. County. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, not punctured. That's impaled, isn't There you it? go. Hey, that's right. Man. Don't, uh, you don't want to fall on That's why I say when you're walking in the woods, be careful. Oh, <laughs> don't yeah. fall into that that's tree. It. That's it. <laughs> uh, hey, this has been fun. Mark, I appreciate uh, what you do for the agency. Uh, it's... Uh, Appreciate what you do for for the for the public out there. It's I told them I told them when they hired me, you know, uh, you know, I'll do this job for free. Just let me drive the truck. <laughs> <laughs> and they threw in the tractor for free. <laughs> they threw in the tractor didn't they? for free. <laughs> uh, appreciate you guys having me. I appreciate both y'all. What y'all do? You Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. It's always a fun time when when we can have a chat, and I'm glad we could do it on the air so folks could uh, could meet you and learn about what you do and and just see all the different. Seek out those ventures. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. We'll do some more. Yeah, there'll be some more. Vance's Ventures online. <laughs> yeah. Check out our Facebook page, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all those fun places. Our website, tmwildlife.org. Our YouTube channel. Like us, share us, click the bell, all that fun stuff. So Beautiful. Anything else, Don? Thanks for the radio partners out there. Uh, appreciate them carrying our show and and uh, won another award this year, so uh, yeah. congrats there, Jason. Thank and you. And uh, thanks for dealing me in around the card table again. <laughs> Maybe one of these days you'll win. Yeah. <laughs> Keep couldn't, trying. Couldn't do it without Todd behind the board over here. That's right. Appreciate him. and The uh, man what he is. Yeah, he makes it happen. So uh, well, that's Tennessee Wildcast for you, and we'll see you next time. Peace out. Love y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.